Welcome back to Anchorage, Alaska. This is Saturday Night Live Finals. My name is Dave Vincent. It is the race for eight. Ready? Luis Moreno from Tucson, Arizona up against Sean Lenning. Once again, these two facing Ladies each other in the finals. And here is the we're announcement. We're about to start our finals for the Alaskan Pro Stop. Let's give a round of applause to these guys. <laughs> Emmett Pichot, our referee. referee talking to Luis here. Luis is he will be making that a formal announcement. These right are now. Games to 15 win by two. Now the audience Luis is completely serves. packed here. It might sound quiet to you at home, but it's not. And Sean Lenning and Luis Returning now. Returning serve. Preparing for this announcement. Washington, Sean Lenning. Actually, from Shoreline, Washington, is Sean Lenning. Serving from Tucson, Arizona, Luis Moreno. Actually, from Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico, transplanted into Tucson, Arizona, is Luis Line Moreno. Line. Formerly ranked number one. Line. Luis okay. lost that ranking here at this tournament when Charlie Shanks took yeah, over the number one ranking, but he was last year's Players Champion. My name is right Dave there. Vincent, alongside right there. David Fink in the booth here. Zero, zero. This is two games to 15, tiebreaker to 15. You have to win by two. And Luis immediately pushes Sean off the court. Sean banking in behind Luis. Sean very active here, Dave. Well, Luis has blown away the competition here this week, Dave. And remember, Luis has beat Sean all four times they've played in race play. Some of those matches, Dave, not close at all. One, zero. Last time they played at the Players' Championship, it was Luis with match point in game two, 14 to 11. Sean came back in that game but lost the tiebreaker 11-2, earning yeah. Luis the Players' Championship and the Player of the Year. Zero, one. Sean Lenning has a wicked natural left-handed hook. Caught Luis off guard. And there's a... Nice kill shot from Sean Lenning. Crowd and quiet, but still putting their hands together. Now tied at one. One, one. Sean credits that really amazing left hand to a couple years he had to play pretty much as a left-hander because that right shoulder was so bad. Now he's got great offense with the left to go with his stiletto right. And look at that, Dave, from the deep court off balance. That's an unbelievable shot right there from Sean Lenning. He does those great little quick pickup Two, type kill one. shots, those paddles that come off the ground and he, and he picks them up quick, but he has some amazing skills with his left hand as well. Dave, I was able to watch some of Luis and Charlie from down there courtside and the pace that Luis is hitting the ball with is absolutely one, unbelievable. I mean, he doesn't have to hit great shots because they're just so hard that it's hard to even react. Now, Sean there had a very good opportunity to earn the side out and just off balance. Two, two. Looks like he might be a little stiff in the lower back right now. Well, Luis put a natural wrinkle on that uh, hook reverse. I think this caught Sean off guard. Sean's able to get that to the front wall and Luis misses it. That's probably the worst miss I've ever seen Luis Moreno make. See those guys do a little hand pump there. Now you always say that, not you, but mm -hmm. it's been known two, that Luis two. and Sean kind of conflict off the court. But here at the club, I've seen them hugging each other and high-fiving. We saw in there a deep respect for each other's game. Sean putting that point down and getting a point. Now, also, that's been the same rumor between yourself and Emmett Pichot. But on the court, it seems like you guys are uh, have a deep Three, respect two. for each other and are still friends. I saw that you guys were also fist-pumping and smiling. One of the first times I've seen you smile in your life is when you're playing Emmett Pichot. So sometimes, you know, those rumors get blown Four, out of the water two. just a little bit well too I much. I think relationships are up and down and there's a, a side out from Sean but you know there's going to be times your buddies and you're not getting along so well and other times you Two, might be getting along four. well and go into the court and for whatever reason there's a some sort of competitive intensity that takes over but that was actually the first time Emmett and I have ever gotten along four. on the court made Two. it a lot more fun hey actually. Dave I saw something there 
let's rack up and let Linda remember to look back on a replay. Okay. Luis Moreno has hurt his left leg on that last play. Not that one right there, but before that, Luis did something to his left leg where maybe he Two, strained a, a hamstring. Start. Oh, and he's reaching back right there, Dave. You see that? It's something in his hip. Second serve. Well, Dave, I think that was what he injured in Ireland at the World Championships and really wasn't the same at the U.S. Open. That should have been an avoidable. I believe, Dave, if we can take a look at that replay yeah. that we asked Linda to rack up, you'll see where Linda has captured some pretty good replays Two here for four. us. Two to four is the score here live in the final. And I do believe this will be a problem later. Point. Well, it didn't bother him there, Dave. And Let's just remember that replay, Linda. We don't necessarily Three, have four. to go back to it right at this moment. But if we see Luis having troubles later, we'll remember to come back. Let's just paper mark it, as they say in the business. I made that up. Sean gives a lot of setups, Dave, but he makes so many gets that he still puts pressure on you, even when you're in an opportunity to end rallies. Four, four. We're all together here. Sean was almost like a mentor to Luis circa 2008, you remember Sean beat Luis at the U.S. Open in the semifinals after Luis beat Brady. Sean was trailing 8-4 in the tiebreaker there, came back and won that 11-8, and I think that's when Sean realized, hey, this guy's not my protege, four, this guy's four. my competition. And I think, Dave, that's when their relationship changed a little bit because before that, Luis Moreno was this young guy with um, unbelievable talent, and then he became the guy that could take Five, Sean's four. spot at the top of American handball. Wow, look at that shot right there. Luis was trying to dig it out, but Sean gets it up to six to four here. Dave, what is it about an athlete that can make him so unstoppable in one match, and then the next match he comes six out and he four. looks ordinary? I mean, Luis Moreno looked like Start. there wasn't a person in the world that could have scored five points against him today. Second serve. And now he, Start. and that's Sean's second double fault. You can't give three points to Luis, not with a Well, remember ability. after. Four. Six. After Sean's first double fault, Luis served him a back wall setup that came about 15 feet off the back wall. That's about the same thing as hitting the ball on the ground. Five, six. I actually count it as, as a double fault. There's another short for Luis. Luis's second serve, he'll do second things serve. up top now that he didn't do before. Not everything with power. That's a reverse that actually stays in. That would be a dangerous serve if that hit the ball, the side wall there, but it doesn't. Six, this slides six. out. It's well, a second serve. Dave, Luis has six points. Two of those came on serves that were routine returns, even setups for Sean, and Sean unable to return them. Seven, six. Luis, Luis was down two to four. Now on a five to two run, make that six to two run, and we're going to see a timeout from Sean timeout. Lenning. And probably an apropos timeout for Sean. This is a three-game match, best two out of three to 15, tiebreaker two, 15 as well. Luis Moreno Did you get my phone run down and get my phone? is uh, putting his eye guards down in the middle of the court. I asked him why he does that, and he said, that's just my thing. You know, Dave, I'd love to see these two guys play fresh. We never get a chance to see that because they're always playing late in tournaments because they have such a similar game. I feel like Luis is a little bit more physically fit and can withstand these rounds and rounds after round better than Sean. And sometimes, Dave, when Sean's in the final, he looks a little bit fatigued, a little bit sore, and Luis just seems to get stronger as the tournament goes on. Seconds. But that's the way it is when you're the top two players. You're not going to meet before the finals. This timeout brought to you by Lay's Potato Chips and Owen Gloves. Mm. Here's that play where I believe Luis gets injured. Watch his left hip here. Right here. Now watch. He reaches back. Is there that a glute or a hip? It might be a glue. Mm. There it is. Lay's potato chips brought to you by Frito Lay at your local retail outlet. Also brought to you by Handy Wipes. Resuming play. Which is what's going to happen after that young lad cleans Eight, his hands six. off on his on his snow coat there. Start. We're still seeking that sponsorship, but second serve. Watch what Luis does here. He went with a reverse last time. And 
Sean just puts that ball on a tee for Luis. Luis. Give, give Sean some room on those. Give him some room on his back wall shots in there. Up they front. watch Sean Lenning a lot, and Nine I don't know if I like six. his body language right now. Uh, he's frustrated with himself. Start. He's double faulted twice in the server's box. Second serve. Gave away a couple shots on just silly back wall misses. And you have to capitalize on those, Dave. Well, Dave. This, you're not going to get a better serve from Luis Moreno than right. that right there. And well, Luis is going to keep doing it until Sean gets it to six. the front wall. Well, that's the third unforced error Sean's made on the return of serve on serves that were very easy to return. That's 30% of Luis Moreno's points coming on very silly errors. Another just terrible error from Sean Lenny. Dave, I truly believe there's a mental psychological barrier 11, six. between these two. Sean Lenning, I don't know if he has the belief when he plays Luis Moreno. Hasn't beat him since 2010. He's only beat him once since 2008. That's a nice shot right there. Wish I had it. Sean Lenning goes down low and just corner kills that ball. But speaking of Sean Lenning's double fault, Dave, he was leading 9-6 in the tiebreaker to 11 at the first race stop at the Plumber 11. event. Sean on his way to the final there and what would have been the number one ranking. Sean hits himself in the head with a Z serve. Never got the serve back, lost 11-9. I believe that changed this rivalry entirely. 11-6. Sean goes on to win that match, Dave, and who knows, maybe it's Sean Lenning that can capture five out of eight race stops. Second serve. Even Sean struggles with that very hard two wall serve. And that's a get that usually Sean makes. Good shot from Luis Moreno, but that's the kind of play that Sean usually 12, reaches in six. and punch fist re-kills. Start. Dave, don't go for extra popcorn when these guys are Second playing because serve. they play fast. Wow, that seemed like it fooled Sean just a bit. And Luis does that dump re-kill with the left hand. Sean just flipping it up and now just feel feeling 13, like he's dismantled. Six. Two points away from heading Start. into the second game here. Second serve. You might see Luis starting to get creative with some of these serves that you might not have ever seen. That's a, just a pure natural hook. And was that a second serve, Dave? 14-6. Here it is, game point. Referee didn't announce it, but it is. I don't like when the referees announce it. Well Dave, I this game was just game. 11 minutes long. Three and minutes. Dave, this is what we've seen in the past with Luis and Sean. You remember 12 months ago, they played in the finals of the Salt Lake City Aces tournament, and it was just Luis Moreno blowing right through Sean Lenning in 18 minutes. That was a, a rally scoring, but it was 25-6, 25-4. Now in rally scoring, Dave, that's almost unheard of. And right now, Luis, Dave, looks recharged, and he looks like the guy that dominated pro handball last season, winning five out of eight. Thus far, Dave, he's winless in his last four ranking events and winless in the first three race stops this season. So the score there was... 15 to 8. I believe it was 6, Dave. Sorry. Yeah. In favor of Moreno. Hmm. So game two will be coming up next in a couple minutes. Dave, you are now, and it's been noted that you will be moving to Tucson, Arizona as the new youth donor and development director of the WPH. I know that you're still formulating your team and also the structure of how this new position will go, but could you talk a little bit about what your goals are and the mission of the WPH as you uh, move forward trying to grow the game? I said that sort of like mm -hmm. George Bush would do right. it, like move forward. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, a as you try to bring handball into another level and, and try to expose the game to literally thousands of kids, what are some of your thoughts? Well, to try to put you on obviously, the Dave, very excited about the position and the move. Looking forward to doing whatever I can to, to grow handball. But our plan is, Dave, to start locally building junior programs, getting as many kids involved in the game as possible, making it fun, teaching the fundamentals, hiring coaches 
that are enthusiastic, that are positive, that understand the game and understand what the game can do for young people and really people of any age. But our goal is to, to get more people playing and keep this sport growing as we've been doing since the WPH started. Obviously, David's going to take a lot of people. It's going to take volunteers. It's going to take coaches. And my job, Dave, is just to sort of oversee that, put together a great team. You and I will be working together and then go out and, and raise some funds. You know, this is a, an incredible sport for, for anybody. And, you know, we believe, Dave, that this is a sport that gives kids discipline. It teaches them geometry. It teaches them athleticism. It teaches them individuality, teamwork, the ability to, to travel, meet new people, and set goals, and, and really use handball as a vehicle to become great people. And I think, Dave, that if we get the pieces in place, that that's what's going to happen. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so this move is going to bring your family mm -hmm. to Tucson, Arizona. Now, it's not something that you are unfamiliar with. You have a four-year degree, communications, and you're also working on your master's degree in sports management. And you uh, obviously have a journalism background. I said communications, but uh, you have done a lot of stuff in sports. You've been a, a professional uh, trainer and coach, mentor in, in, in golf as well as tennis. Uh, I know you've gone on tour in golf and tennis as well and, and been around the handball circles for a long time, but you are no stranger to right, Arizona we're about to start the because you went game. to the University of Arizona right. and, ha and actually have John a four-year degree mm -hmm. from that college. Zero, so uh, zero. I'm sure you're looking forward to making that transition with the family to Point. the uh, the state with a lot of sun. Hmm. One, zero. That'll be a big change coming from the city with start. the most cloudy days of anywhere in the United Second States. Serve. Hmm, let me think. Is this another one of those questions? No, in it's a form not. Of an what because is Pittsburgh? you already know. Yes, that's correct. Oh, wow, yes. Zero, one. What is the Three Rivers City? There is, Dave, trivia even during the finals. I know that I saw it good. you like to keep one things three. on the level, but in fact, Dave, John. there is trivia during the finals. And your question is, John, were you watching? How many finals? We saw it. Has Luis Moreno lost we on the Race for Eight Pro we Tour? Good. Wow. One, one. You'll have until the first break in the action until play Start. resumes after that break. So you won't have to be surprised when that break happens, but when it does, Second and that serve. could be a towel timeout, could be a, an official timeout, could be an injury timeout. There's a lot of reasons that we could have a break in the action. I'll just go ahead and jump out and just Kay. say right now, mm -hmm. Never. Was that in the form of a question? Or you didn't it ask it me if it had to be in the form of a question. I thought that was just one. understood. I well mean, does Alex Trebek tell them after every question? Well, that I didn't know we were playing that game. I mm. Well, we are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two, <laughs> what is never? Correct. Thank you. Yes. Point. And yes. for that, I will sit next to you at the victory party tonight as you appear Three, and disappear all within 10 <laughs> seconds. Start. Well, I hope they have a bed at that Mexican restaurant. Second serve. Because I'll be underneath it. Hmm. Strange shot right there from Luis. Sean tries to fly hop that after having a <laughs> three point to one lead here. He was up four to two one in the first game. Three. It seemed like he was in control in here now. Not so much. Dave, you play Luis Moreno quite a bit. How hard is it to read whether he's going left or right? Now, forget about the, the hop. How hard is it to pick up whether he's going down the right Three, side or left? One. Yeah, it's difficult. In fact, I really started studying to Start. try to see what he does. And Second I'll even serve. ask him after the shot is over, what, how, how did you do that? And he said, well, I knew that you were thinking I was going to go to the right. So I just told myself second. at the last second I was going right, right, right. And then right when I hit it, I decided to flip it to the left. Hmm. And he says, I don't even know when I drop the ball. I just make up my decision right at the last second. It's oh. funny, Dave. That's exactly what Serena Williams says. She's the best server in the history of women's tennis. Even I'd say in men's tennis one would be one of the best servers. But she says when I throw the ball up, I have Three, no idea one. where I'm going. Yeah, I just react and, and swing. I know it didn't answer your question, but no, I'm it just did. trying to prove to you that there's just really no answer. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't know when he's going to hit right. it, then how will I know? But we do One, play each other three. a lot. In fact, I would say over the last three months, nobody has played Luis Start. Moreno more games of singles than I have. Mm. And I'd put it up there near the 100 game mat uh, in Second the last serve. three months or so. I might be it's off. It's actually 115. I've okay. counted. Okay. He texted me about every game that you played with him. So Luis likes to play about nine Two, games three. every time you play. Mm. 
He's the only guy you can play and not feel sore the next day because you never right. get out of the server's box. I mean, he never gets right. out of the server's box. You never get out of the block to go after one of his three, serves. Three. I don't even know why he plays me, but I think Start. it's because I buy lunch. Hmm. He doesn't realize I stole his credit card. He hasn't got the statement yet. Hmm. Good person. Second serve. I assume that once he gets that statement, we'll never play again. Oh, a terrible air there from Sean. Look like he changed his mind there. Well, Sean could be out of shape or frustrated with his Four play, but three. you can't make those hand airs. Four to three. Wow, that ball just totally reverses away. Oh, great shot from Luis. But I'll tell you something about Luis. Since we do play a lot, we, we, we play around in there and do a lot of funny stuff. Yeah. Luis actually has this um, barrage of Five, impersonations three. of top players mm. like Charlie Shanks, oh, uh, Robbie McCarthy, Paul Brady. So he's the Novak Djokovic oh, of handball. Oh, it's unbelievable. You should see him. Just ask him someday Three, to do the Robbie five. McCarthy serve and then return serve. It's very funny. Okay. Um, but he impersonates all the top players. And I asked him one time if for the next five points I want Robbie, Mc I want to play Robbie McCarthy. And so he did. Mm. Came back with his hand up, floated back, did the whole Robbie McCarthy thing, even on ceiling five, shots. Three. Mm. He says all I do is I sit back and study everybody's game. So I asked him to do the Dave Fink, and then he did that Lotus thing with his right mm -hmm. hand up in the air, and then yeah. you know Six, it was unbelievably three. funny. Luis is quite the character. Sean's very frustrated with himself. That's I your first. think he just snapped his goggles in half. Luis is probably going to try to make good of those. Nope, still on the floor in one piece. But Dave, Sean's upset with himself, but it doesn't seem like physically he's getting himself in the right position to hit shots. It's not as though... He's in a good position to hit shots and missing them. He's not moving his feet. A lot of these balls are jamming them or they're just way out of his strike zone. So he really can't expect to hit good shots without getting himself into position. Yet he's frustrated. Maybe he's frustrated, Dave, that he's not, not moving his feet. I'm not sure. What's really frustrating is the fact that Luis still feels seconds. like he needs to keep playing handball. Mm -hmm. Well, he's already got a match scheduled, Dave, with, um, with you after this ends. Well, it's funny that you say that is because he asked me when we're done, do you want to play a game? I looked at him, I go, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah I just want to, you know, get a couple in before I go back home. Yeah. 10 seconds. But it, it is odd. Yesterday we, we did play in that round of 16. Mm -hmm. And then immediately afterwards he said, do you want to play another game? And I said, well, I have to go webcast a match. Mm. And then we sat and talked for about 15 minutes and I said, yeah, you know what, let's go in there and hit it for 10. And he goes, yeah, let's go. And then we got kicked out by some racquetball players, but He's always wanting three. to play handball. He's got, he's got the bug. Wow, right. look at that reverse right there. Luis has actually been working on this overhand serve. I'm surprised he hasn't brought Eight, it out yet. Three. And Dave, this is, it's getting late early here. Start. Still less than 25 minutes into this match and Luis Second. Moreno, 75% of the way towards another championship. Second serve. Luis standing dead center on the court is so unbelievably vicious. Now because he was trying to get Eight, out of the way, that's three. okay, right? Sean's upset, that's why he held the ball a little longer. Well, Luis was in the middle of the court, he didn't back up. That's a beautiful shot from Luis. Sean is not happy with himself here. Nine, three. You know, Dave, Luis is not really known as a flat kill shot artist. Start. He's a guy that drives the ball with a lot of power and hop down the walls. Second but serve. he's hit some unbelievable kill shots with both hands. I mean, flat rollouts. And Sean didn't even get back to the center of the court. That's a ball he can pick up. That didn't even double bounce before the short line. And Sean was nowhere Ten, near it. Three. Generally, as a pro, Dave, you're trying to make the ball double bounce before it gets to the short line. And if you're playing pro handball, if you're playing pro handball, Dave, you know that any of these pros are going to pick up a ball that doesn't double bounce before Ten, that short three. line. I know, Dave, you're trying to hit four walls before it hits the floor. So that's a different goal. Eleven, three. That's one of the best shots Sean's hit in this game behind his back. Well, he finally found a way to get that serve back. Yeah, you just go behind the back. 
Icon's all out of sorts here, and this is going to be the most lopsided final we've ever had, and he's Actually, frustrated. That's not true. 12 3. Perhaps they, we should just be Start. webcasting the playoff matches. Those seem to be the most exciting. Second serve. Sorry. That's an overhit from Sean. He knows he put a hook on it. He was in Luis's way. No call from the ref. And Luis plays through it, gets the point, and the crowd puts their hands together. 13 3. Just a rather. Strange final here. I was about to say that Sean could bring this to nine Second to ten serve. pretty quickly, and then Luis just <laughs> scored three quick points. I don't know what gave you the feeling that, that could happen based well on what we've seen. Well, every match thus far. that we've ever seen Sean Lenning play, he just has this weird knack of being able to score ten three quick 13. points, but it's six or seven quick points. But he's not doing it here. Luis is really comfortable upstairs. And Dave, this is just target practice for Luis Moreno. 13-3. Start. That serve that Luis is doing to the right, that's fading away. Second serve. But Dave, we've talked about this before. Luis Moreno only has two wins out of 15 against Alan Garner. Sean Lenning, only two losses out of 20 against Luis Moreno, Alan Garner, only one loss to Alan Garner out of 16. It's just so odd how that's worked out over the last six or seven years. 13, three. Well, if we put those three guys into a round robin, it would Start. take six years to figure out who the winner would mm. be. But you don't go by point differential in round robins, do you? I don't necessarily believe in that. Second serve. Just go by wins. <laughs> There'd be a tie for first place forever. <laughs> and now we are at game and match point for Luis Moreno, and this crowd is going to 14 possible match serving three. Put their hands together here after this final point from Luis Moreno, and he goes for the crack and hits Luis. Well, Luis Sean plays Lee. a lot of home games, Dave, on the race for eight pro tour. He had a home game in Tucson, now another home three. game here in his second home in Anchorage. There it is. Luis Moreno Good takes match, down guys. stop number four, his first race stop of the year, and they will stand up and give a round of applause to Good the plan, WPH Luis. and Luis Moreno and the whole process here in Anchorage, Alaska. And the crowd very appreciative here. There's Dave, the round of applause. Witness, Dave, the guy that is no longer number one, but he certainly played like the overwhelming number one. Perhaps, Dave, he can recapture that number one ranking in Denver. We'll have to see how the points shake out if he even has a mathematical possibility. I'm not sure that he does. But today, Dave, it was Luis Moreno's day, the natural, just absolutely dominating the, s the top two of the top three guys on the race for a tour, of course, he being the other of those three. But Dave, Charlie Shanks scoring just five points in the semifinals, 15 to four, 15 to one. Sean Lenning scoring just nine points, 15 to six. 15 to 3. Remember, Sean Lenning led 3 to 1 in the second game. Louis scored 14 straight points. He Sean Lenning, Sean Lenning. That's what Sean Lenning usually does. Yeah, let's to guys. listen here. I don't think we can get a microphone, but Luis is thanking everybody in the crowd here. We're unable to hear what Luis has to say, but he's really just stepping up here. This is a hometown crowd for him. He doesn't even do this in his own hometown. He's appreciated and loved. We can't hear it, but let's try to read lips. Very nice gesture there from Luis. And Dave, these guys appreciate that so much being acknowledged. You see Dave, J.R. Lugo up there standing up. He told me, you know, I normally play handball four or five times a week, but I just want to come here. I just want to watch every match. I don't even want to go play a game in the back courts because I don't want to miss a match. I've been here every day since 9.30 in the morning, and I just can't get enough. I stay until the last match is over. And he said, you know, I, these guys are thanking me for letting them, letting me have them stay in my home. But really, it's me that is is thankful of them getting to talk to these pro players and spend time with them, and just really kind of be around some of the some of his heroes. And that's what the, that's what these pro players are to these fine gentlemen in Anchorage. 
Well, they appreciate their handball. Dave, it's, it's frustrating because the crowd is still sitting in the seats right now waiting for more <laughs> handball, and they know that it'll take probably another 12 months for them to see this level of play. We had the top tournament sponsor, Matt Thorpe, come by the booth here just recently and say, you know, this of all the years that we've ever had the pros here, this is the greatest that we've ever had, and, mm. the, and the night's not over because we have a victory party going down um, in about an hour or so, and it's going to get, he said, crazy. He also said that you and I were going to be mic'd up and we're going to do a comedy uh, skit. Well, we're neither of us are funny, so <laughs> I I'm thought not that sure was how odd. that would I work. We don't, we don't work in big groups. No. Well, we don't really – we don't really work. funny anyway. So I said that's not going to work. But no. we will travel around from table to table and just give part of that show that we do, yeah. uh, I guess. Yeah, it's a high-class show. <laughs> it <laughs> <laughs> really is. Yeah. Um, it's so very appropriate for, <laughs> for women and children. It's just <laughs> very inspiring, very so mature. So too bad the camera won't be following us around for that. Mm. But that will be coming up a little later on. That will be <laughs> the wrap for this. Congratulations out to Luis Moreno, who came back with a just a, a dominant performance, Dave. It seemed like he wanted to not only win this, but also send a message back out there and say, you know, I might have been gone for a few stops. I wasn't inspired to play at the U.S. Open. I didn't do well losing in the quarterfinals of uh, the Tucson event, taking Houston off for my birthday, and then now coming out here to Anchorage, Alaska, home away from home, where he really only put on about 35 to 40 minutes worth of c total court time, and, and he just blew out his opponents. Uh, today's match wasn't more than 25 minutes mm -hmm. as I look at the clock, and earlier today when he faced uh, in, in the semifinals, Charlie Shanks was only a 19-minute yeah. match, and that includes a three-minute break in timeouts that Charlie took. And that was obviously uh, a, a very quick one for him as well. So wasn't on the court very much, but the crowd uh, certainly enjoys Luis Moreno. He came out and did what he had to do. He won this race stop in Anchorage, Alaska. We are going to wrap it up for Jason Rutherford, who was our lead camera operator this weekend, our director, Linda Manning, back home in Portland, Oregon, Chris Garad, who is our executive producer. I want to thank him for his work behind the scenes. Dave Fink, Anthony Celesto, you're truly Dave Vincent. We want to thank you for tuning in to this live feed and this broadcast provided by the World Players of Handball Foundation. We hope you have a great weekend. Until next time, thanks for tuning in to racegreat.com. places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. Are you getting this, honey? Oh, prime time. We are rolling. <laughs> All right, Mama's going to bring it home. Mama's okay. going to bring it home. Yay. Okay. okay. Come on. Ah! Watch this guy. Oh, oh okay. backwards. Oh, Woo! don't. Oh, okay. It went into Bob and Carol's yard. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Here it goes. Challenge your kids to be active and eat healthy. All right, let's see what you can do. Let's go. They might surprise you. Search We Can for more ideas on how you and your kids can get healthy together. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green. Working and working out takes a lot of energy. That's why I drink Zenergy. Feeling fantastic and looking good has never been easier. Zion. Extreme science for your active lifestyle.